blessings, blessings, blessings. We'll get started in about two more seconds. Give me one second. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to welcome everybody to this week Deliver Me Nugget. And so um, I want to welcome you. Thank you all for coming. Um, so today we're going to talk about trusting God in the process. Blessings, blessings, blessings to you. We want to talk about trusting God in the process. What is the process? The process is anything that's uncomfortable. The process is a trial. The process is a, a sickness, an illness, pain, frustration, disappointment. Or you're in the midst of a situation and you waiting on God to move. You waiting to see breakthrough. You waiting for things to change. But can I tell you? The nugget for today is trusting God in the process. Even I want to share, even when we're talking about Christmas is here in a couple of days, a lot of times people get disappointed. People get caught up in the rigmarole of, 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 of being with uh, of their loved one, being with somebody, hugged up, what the lonely do. Can I tell you, you got to trust God in the process? Can I tell you, you got to look beyond the super the superficial stuff, lessons to you. You got to begin to thank God that you got air in your body. Thank God that you got strength. Thank God that you got food to eat. Thanking God that you got a place to live. Thanking God that he's taking care of you. Because a lot of times we get so caught up because we're looking at what somebody else got and we're not thanking God for what he has given us. And this is where you find, you thank God for the little things. Because if you're talking about, we say, I'm going to celebrate the birth, the birth of Jesus, you're celebrating life. Life, life in him. It's not about a gift. It's not about a Christmas tree. It's about displaying the love of who Christ is. And so you're going to have to trust him. If you're going to walk in this season, this is where you're going to have to keep your mind on him. Don't look at all oh, what well, they got this. I don't have that. Stop comparing. Can I tell you, you got to put your eyes on him and thank God for the little things. I don't care if you got to ride the bus. I don't care if you sleep on somebody's sofa. I don't care if you eat Roman noodles every day. If you don't, you might not like your job, but you got a job. You got some money. You got some food to eat. Can I tell you, you got to trust God in the process. Trusting God means you don't see it, but you believe in him for it. You saying that I, that's right, mother, is praising him for life. It's praising him that I got strength. I'm in my right state of mind. He brought me from January 1 to December the 21st and guess what? I'm going to trust him. It may not look like I got all the money to pay my bills. It may not look like everything is working out the way that I want it to work out, but you got to begin to trust him. That means you don't see it, but you telling him, God, I trust you. Whenever that thing come to your mind, whenever that thing come to make you feel like, you know what, you ain't got it. God don't left you. You got to cast down every imagination, every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And you got to tell that devil, you a liar. I trust God. Can I tell you trusting God means you don't see it, what you believe in him for. Can Trusting God means you don't feel it, what you believe in him for. It's where you got a scripture and you hold on to that scripture. Whenever the enemy try to bring negative thoughts to your mind, it's when you quote that scripture. It's when you pray that scripture. It's when you believe that scripture. That's what trusting God through the process. Can I tell you, stop looking at your process, measuring it up with somebody else's process. Somebody else's process may take six months. Somebody else's process may take two years. Somebody else's process may take five years. But can I tell you, keep your eyes focused on your process. Don't let your mind wander. Don't let your mind look at what somebody else is doing. But begin to thank God for what it is that he has given you and what you believe in him for. See, this is the season where our faith is on trial. This is the season where we got to say, God, I trust 
trust you. I trust you when I can't feel you. I trust you when I don't see you. Can I tell you what that word trust mean? That's right. You got to tell that devil you're a liar. That word trust mean that I'm going to rely on him. I'm going to rely on what I don't see. I'm going to rely on what I don't feel. That I'm going to take refuge in him because God is my refuge. You got to begin to say God is my stronghold. God is my strong tower. This is where you got to prophesy and say, you know what? It ain't going to always be like this. Can I tell you, you got to trust him in the process. Can I tell you, it's going to work out for your good. But you got to go through the process. When you're going through the process, it don't look like what it is, what God promised you. It don't look like what God told you is going to happen. You can't go by what it looked like. You got to go and speak the word. The Bible say everything is going down but his word. So you can't be focused on the situation. Take your eyes off the situation. Take your eyes off the man. Take your eyes off the woman. Take your eyes off the situation and trust God in the process. Apostle, that's hard to do. Can I tell you? That's why I'm telling you to get your scripture. So I got a scripture for you. I'm going to read Proverbs um, 3 and verse 5. And I'm reading it out of the voice of version. It says, place your trust in the eternal. Rely on him completely. See, this is where you ain't worried about, man, I'm trusting God to do this. It's a never depend upon your own ideas, your own interventions. It's a give him the credit for everything you accomplish. And he will smooth out and straighten the road that lies ahead. And it says, and don't think you can decide on your own what is right and what is wrong. But respect the eternal. Turn and run from evil. If you depend on him, your body and mind will be free from the strain of a sinful life. And you will experience healing and health and will be strengthened at the core. Can I tell you, this is where you got to place your trust. Bless the apostle. You got to place your trust on him. You have to rely on him completely. Even when it looks like the odds are against you. Even when it looks like the doctors say ain't nothing we can do. Even when they say I'm turning you down for the loan. Even when they say we don't have a position for you. Even when they say I don't want to I don't want to work on the marriage. Even though when you say I don't know what I'm going to do. God need for you to rely on him. Don't look at the situation but put your eyes on him. Colossians 3 says set your eyes on the things up above. So you got to set your eyes on the promise. Keep your eyes on the promise because that's what faith is. This is where God needs you to, uh, the Bible say in uh, Titus, contend for the faith. What does contend for the faith mean? That means you fighting with your words. This is the time you got to open up your mouth because there's a fight in the realm of the spirit for the words. Every time the devil put it on your mind, you fight with your scripture. Every time you feel some kind of way, fight with your scripture. What are you doing? Now you're waging war with the enemy. You're waging war with the enemy. That's why they call it spiritual warfare because it's a fight with words. You're fighting other spirits that are in the atmosphere because the enemy wants you to move, be moved by your feelings. He wants you to be moved by your emotions. Can I tell you, you got to get away from people that don't believe what the way you believe. You got to get away from people who don't believe that you're going to get it. You got to get away from people who don't believe that it's going to happen. You got to begin to surround yourself around people that believe. The Bible say all you need is two people. All you need is another person. I just need you to agree. The book of Amos 3 and 3 say how can two walk together unless they agree. And so if you begin to agree you're going to watch God fulfill the promise. Because can I tell you God want to see. He want to see where your faith at. Because say, a lot of times it's easy to praise God when everything is good. It's easy to praise God when you got all the money. When you ain't dealing with no warfare. But can you tell me can you praise God when you don't have any money? Can you praise God when your health looking funny? Can you praise God when your household is chaotic? Can you praise God when the people on your job is acting crazy? Can you praise God when things look uncertain? See, this is where you got to trust him in the process. You got to say, God, you are my refuge. You are the one that I got confidence in. You are the one that I'm depending on. You got to say, I'm your child because I don't know what I'm doing. I tell him that all the time. I 
said, God, I surrender. I said, because I don't know what I'm doing. I need you to show me what you want me to do. I need you to show me which way you want me to go. See, this is a time that God wants you to depend on him for everything. Can I tell you, you can't depend on yourself. You can't depend on the pastor. You can't depend on your husband or your wife. You got to depend on him because God is looking for some people who will believe him when the odds are stacked against you. God began to tell me, he said that we are in some Red Sea, we are the Red Sea situations. He told me to tell the church Sunday, he said, just like when Moses brought the children of Israel at the Red Sea, it looked like it's a dead end situation, but God said, prophesy. He said, prophesy and trust me. He said, trust me that I'm going to make a way out of no way. He said, trust me and watch me turn the hand. Watch me that those that said that they wouldn't help you, they'll turn around and help you. Watch the people who said that they won't give, they'll turn around and give. Watch when the people who say they wouldn't give you a loan will turn around and give you the very thing. And see, and this is why he's looking for you. You got to begin to trust him in the process. We are going through the test. You got to go through the test like a soldier. You got to stop looking down with your head looking down like you can't make it. Look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm going to make it. You got to prophesy and tell yourself, you know what, tears may be coming down your face, but you got to tell yourself, you know what, shake yourself and say, I'm going to pass this test. Shake yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to speak what thus says the Lord. Can I tell you, you don't have to have a prophet. The prophet is on the inside of you. If you got the spirit of Jesus on the inside of you, I dare you to open up your mouth and begin to speak to the situation. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, I'm going to make it. You got to continue to keep talking until it changes. Well, Apostle, I've been doing this a week. Do it another week. Keep doing it until it changes. You got to understand, God, God is trying to teach us how to walk in endurance. He's trying to teach us how to go through perseverance. He's trying to teach us, that's it, Shonda, to pass the test. You got to understand, when you are in school, the teacher don't talk when you taking a test. And a lot of times people say, I haven't heard God say nothing because you are taking a test. This is why you get the word. The, girl, the word has already told you you won, but you got to speak what his word says. And a lot of times people think, I just know, you know what, I don't feel nothing. Can I tell you God didn't tell you you got to feel it? God didn't tell you that you even got to see it. He said, I need you to believe it. I need you to believe me that I will make a way out of no way. He said, I need you to believe me that you know what? That you'll walk in the midst of the fire and the fire will not burn you. He said, I want to let you know that you're going to walk in the 12 feet and of water and it won't drown you. He said, even though it looks like the situations are overwhelming you, it looks like it's too much, but you got to prophesy and say, you know what? God, I trust you in the process. You got to tell him, God, I'm relying on you. God, I'm depending on you. I know you got me. Can I tell you, you look at your money and say, you know what? God multiplied. God, I thank you that I got more than enough. Can I tell you, it's going to take some faith to prophesy. It's going to take some strength to prophesy. Say, I got all I need. Everything that I need, God is supplying all my needs. I ain't got to worry about it. I ain't got to struggle. Every time it come on your mind, start prophesying. See, a lot of times we want somebody else to do it for us. And God saying, I'm trying to show you. God saying, I'm trying to teach you how to prophesy. A lot of times we waiting on the prophet to call our name. We waiting on the prophet to make us feel good. And God said, I'm trying to teach you something. He said, I don't want nobody to give you the fish. I want them to show you how to fish. I want them to show you how to come to me. See, I'm trying to show you how to come to the Father. Because if I show you how to come to me, you're going to always keep coming to me when you in need. But if I show you what to say, if I show you what to do, so when trouble hit, you ain't going to look for me. You're going to know how to go directly to the Father. See, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't, I don't need no three man. I don't need no three way. I need to go straight to the Father. And this is why you you got to open up your mouth because the Bible say, God say, he ain't moved by your tears. He ain't moved by your face. Do you not know God is not moved by our emotions? He ain't moved by our attitudes. God is moved by his word. Can I tell you the currency of a relationship with God is faith? In other words, just like how we use money to operate on this earth, we use money to operate, to buy things, to get things, but in heaven and in the kingdom of God, God uses faith and 
other words, so he needs for you to believe what you don't see. He needs you to believe what you don't see. And he's waiting on you to see, do, do you really believe it? And so he allow us to go through this process. He allow us to, it'll look like, oh, it's hard. Oh, it's difficult. Can I tell you, this is the time where it's going to strengthen your prayer life. Why? Because can I tell you, it's okay to tell God, you know what, I don't like this. God, this is very uncomfortable for me. You know what, God, I, you know what, I don't see how you're going to do it, but God, I trust you. Lord, I don't know who you're going to touch, but Lord, I trust you. Lord, I don't know who you're going to move out the way to give me what I need to get, but Lord, I trust you. See, he's looking for you to speak the words because do you not know that your words is activating the angels? Can I tell you, your words are a lie. Can I tell you, just like how a plant can hear, if a plant can hear, don't you know that God is you gave you you got the word of the breath of God on the inside of you, and God is waiting on you to open up your mouth. Can I tell you you got the ruach, you got the winds of God on the inside of you? Can I tell you you may not feel no chill bumps, you may not feel no fire, but I dare you to open up your mouth and you talk back to the situation. I dare you to open up your mouth and you talk back to the storm. I dare you to open up the mouth and tell the storm you got to go you got to open up the door and tell the devil you got to get out of my house open up the door and tell the devil you got to get out of my face you got to get out of my marriage you got to get out of my money open up the door and tell the devil you got to get out and open up your mouth and legislate because the bible said we supposed to be governed because we are kings and we are priests and if you're a child of god god ain't waiting on you they said, wait on the pastor to tell you what to say. No, get in that word and speak that word on yourself. Because can I tell you, you got to keep speaking it. You got to keep, that's right. You got to say, get out of my life, Shonda. Every time things mess up, every time things start going crazy, you got to tell the devil, I'm not going to get out of place. I'm going to stay right here because the greater one lives on the inside. You got to trust God in the process because God is allowing this to happen to get you to where you need to be at. God is trying to get you to grow. Can I tell you in 2022, God don't want you where you've been at in 2020, 21. He wants you to go to a higher level of faith. He wants you to go to a higher dimension in him. So therefore, when it look like he ain't coming, you say, but he coming. He coming because he promised me he coming. In his word, he said everything is going down but his word. And see, and this is where you got to know to speak his word. Can I tell you? It's scary. Can I tell you, it'll make you a little fearful. But can I tell you, fear is a spirit. And you got to speak to that spirit of fear. And you got to tell that spirit of fear, you got to go in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you, you got to speak to that anxiety. You speak, you feel that anxiety or the enemy to make you afraid to go to the next level. Can I tell you, you got to walk into that next place where God got for you to go. Because you ain't going to walk there if you're afraid. You ain't going to walk there if you expecting to be comfortable. Can I tell you, if you are comfortable, you are out of the will of God. If you are comfortable in your situation, you are out of the will of God. Because when you're in the will of God, can I tell you, you're going to be on your teeth and talk because you're going to say, God, help me. Oh, God, it's so uncomfortable. I don't know what you're doing, but I know you're doing something. This is where you got to know that God is there. So you can't sit up there and thinking that you're comfortable and that God is pleased. No, no, no. God wants you to lean and depend on him. God wants you to come to him and prayer say God what's going on show me what to do but when you don't know what to do speak his word when you don't know what to do speak what the word says God don't need you to gotta try to make up nothing the Bible say in Proverbs 3 and 5 trust in the Lord lean not to your own understanding he saying all your ways acknowledge me he saying I direct your path all you gotta say God I need your help and he said I'm gonna direct your path all you gotta do is say God I need you to show me what to do I'm a little afraid. What the word say? God did not, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. You got to know that when the enemy is coming up against you, he's trying to shut you down that you won't speak the word. But you got to speak the word. 
when you don't know what else to do. You got to speak the word when you don't hear him. You got to speak the word because those words are activating angelic spirits to help you. They are fighting on your behalf. That's what he told Daniel. The angel told Daniel, I heard you the first time that you prayed. But the angel said, I had to go get some help. This is why you got to trust God in the process to keep on praying until you get a breakthrough. Keep on fasting until you get a breakthrough. Can I tell you, this is the time, even as we get ready to go into 2022, I would like to encourage you to go on some type of fast. Why? Because you need to hear what it is that God wants you to do. You need to stop thinking, stop doing the same thing that you always did. You need to, whether or not you do a Daniel fast, whether or not you're doing a liquid fast, but you need to get in the face of God and say, God, what do you want me to do? Because can I tell you, because sometimes we have gotten so complacent that you know we wait on somebody to tell us when you ought to be able to hear what thus says the Lord. And can I tell you, God will give you confirmation, but you need to learn to hear God on your own. You need to learn to hear God. He lives inside of you. So if he lives inside of you, you need to know what he's saying to you. And so your man or woman of God, when they talking, you'll be able to say, you know what? God spoke that to me. Yep, that's what God told me. But a lot of times we don't know because we don't know the voice of God. God lives within you and he speaks to your spirit, man. So you got to begin to open up your heart, open up your mind so that he would take you through the process. Because can I tell you, the situation can't kill you. The situation can't make you have no breakdown. The situation, God is trying to train you. God is trying to train you. A lot of times we think God just anoints us. No, God anoints you through the trial. He anoints you through the process. He anoints you through the going through. He anoints you where you feel like you all alone. You feel like don't nobody understand. You got to understand that you're in a training place. You're in a place that God is trying to teach you how to lean on and depend on him because because that's it, woman of God, because he lives on the inside of you. That's why a lot of times we can't get it twisted because how people act around us, you got to know that you got the true and living God on the inside of you. So that's why you got to train yourself that you got to hear his voice through the darkest time. Even sometimes he don't speak loud. Sometimes he speak with a little whisper. Sometimes he speak when you hear a song. Sometimes he speak when you listen to worship. Sometimes you he speak when you looking at a billboard. See, this is why you got to have your your heart ready. That's why I said begin to turn down your place before the new year and begin to get in the face of God and say, God, what you want me to